Hello and welcome to the Blockchain and Us, where pioneers and thought leaders talk about their journey in blockchain technology, crypto assets, and the token economy. And I'm your host, Manuel Staggers. This episode has support from my very own The Blockchain and Us newsletter. Get an email from me every two weeks with a very short summary of new podcast episodes so you can immediately pick those interviews you'd like to listen to. To stay up to date, just visit www.theblockchainandus.com and sign up today. My guest today is Tony Tao. Tony is the founder of X Order, a token virtual economy think tank and investment fund. He is the founding partner of Neo Global Capital, a member of the Ali Microfinance Forum Expertise Group and Tencent Tengyun Think Tank Group, the co-writer of Blockchain Blueprint for a New Economy and Blockchain Technology from Digital Currency to Credit Society. And now to the conversation with Tony Tao. Hi, Tony, and many thanks for taking time today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Manu. You run a blockchain investment fund out of China, and you have a very long history with digital payments, for example, with, uh, with Union Pay. So how did you cross over from the more banking applications to crypto and blockchain technology? Okay. When I was working in the banking system, uh, especially in the Chinese Union Pay, or Standard Chartered Bank, yes, I, I feel very strange. <laughs> it's like, um, I don't know what is my role mm -hmm. in the bank or in the system, in the company. I even don't know what is the um, function or what is the banking system could help the financial system of the world. I was wondering, um, what I can help to do something in this company. So I changed my job. In four years, I changed three or four jobs. But always always within the banking sector in China? Yes, yes, in China. So one year Standard Chartered Bank, and the other one is China, Chinese Union Pay. The third and fourth one is a payment company you know, like Alipay. But um, when I was focusing on the payment things, I found that uh, in the world, you know, I have to search for the news of the world to do some research job. Then I found that in 2013, there are a lot of news, which is tagged by payment, mm -hmm. actually, they are talking about Bitcoin. Uh, it's very strange in 2013 for me, uh, who is a payment industry employee, to find out that Bitcoin is very popular in the world, in payment industry. Mm -hmm. Then I discovered more in Bitcoin and uh, found that Bitcoin is very, very special. And... Uh, I thought at that time, it is the future. So I quit my job and uh, uh, yes, I, I uh, contacted BTCC, mm -hmm. um, the oldest uh, exchange in China in Bitcoin industry. So this is my first step in Bitcoin industry. Mm -hmm. Got it. And, and you never looked back and you never thought, oh, that was nice there at the bank. Mm, how do you say it? Um, I'm a person who is very, um, very easy to feel tired, to feel, to need to refresh myself to, yeah, to find new things. But in Bitcoin industry, I can, even now, I can still feel that every day there are a lot of fresh things to contact. To, feel, to fulfill me. Mm -hmm. Were there many people interested in Bitcoin? For example, your colleagues from the bank, what did they say when you told them about what you found? Actually, there are two things. Actually, uh, one thing that uh, we are talking about Bitcoin is the price is going sharply up. 
And then uh, when the price is going down slowly, then it seems that people are forgetting about it. For you, obviously, you said this is the future. You want to work with this and you want to change something where you can have an impact. But what was it like with, you know, your former colleagues, maybe who were still working at Union Pay or other Chinese banks? Did they also see it that way or were they also more skeptical about it? As for my colleagues in Union Pay or in the payment companies, uh, most of them do not understand what is the importance of Bitcoin. Uh, what they are understanding is the price is going up. This is a very good chance to do the speculation, to do the trading and the mining. But uh, it's very hard for them to 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 read some the deep knowledge like the white paper of Bitcoin in 2013 and 2014. While I, when I contact BTCC, I found still there is a little group of people, even in China, yes, are very interested in Bitcoin, not only the price, but also the knowledge and the purpose. Mm -hmm. Back then, what what did you guys talk about, you know, regarding the purpose of Bitcoin? I mean, what did you see that it could be doing? Um, firstly, even we have no Bitcoin, the believers of Bitcoin industry, uh, in their heart, they believe in freedom, you know. just uh, It's just Bitcoin that could remind us of the freedom to speak out freedom bitcoin is like a target that we can uh, talk about freedom with bitcoin i think this is it why, why did you think um you understood but other people didn't i mean what what do you think was the difference there uh it's very easy actually when i talk about bitcoin to my colleagues even to my friends they are very surprised that it seems I'm, I am truly believe, believing in Bitcoin in 2014. You know, they laughed at me. It's very easy to recognize that they do not understand Bitcoin because they laughed at me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, not only them, but also uh, most of Chinese people in 2014, we, what they are looking at Bitcoin is yes, that it is something forbidden by the government. And uh, it's like, like a very big bubble. It's a Ponzi game. Do not touch Bitcoin. If you touch it, the result in the end of, my, of me would not be the good end. It must be a bad ending. This is what they are thinking about. But has that changed now in recent years? Of course. Um, the, the story, ending of the story of me and my friends uh, is not very good. Even if nowadays uh, I have a little success in the crypto industry because I cannot contact my friends like my young times anymore. You know, we we cannot to go to go back to the to the time when we are young. It's very hard. Hmm. It's very hard. I think that happened to several other people as well. But maybe it's it's easier for somebody in America or Europe. You know, who first people were laughing at them, and and then they made it. And, and now they understand, but maybe it's maybe less forgiving and people have lost face almost in China or in Asia. And so it's more difficult. Yes, yes. So now, now you're working with several different projects. I mean, other than BTCC in China, um, I mean, you were working with NEO. And first, I'd li like to speak about your project X Order. Can you briefly explain what X Order is? Okay, so... It's always very hard to explain X order. <laughs> uh, this is because it's very hard to explain 
cryptocurrency is very similar in the earlier times of cryptocurrency. Hmm. You know, and when we are talking about the future in the blockchain or the, in the cryptocurrencies, we are always saying that it's not only about freedom, it's not only about technology, and it's not only about the money. Yes, it is multiple things combined together. So I think Exodus is the same thing. I'm interested in investment, firstly. And uh, secondly, I am very interested in the research, especially the economy research. So in the economy research, um, there is some methodology, which is called complexity theory. So uh, when I was young, I do not understand with what is finance or what is economy. But when I contact complexity theory and when I contact Bitcoin, then I combined these two things together, combined complexity theory and Bitcoin industry. The first one is a theory. The second one is a real market, the real world things. So I can find in the Bitcoin industry, the complexity theory is very, very right. And the first thing in the crypto, or how to say, the most hard thing to live in the crypto is to understand the world, to do the right thing. Uh, even if the crypto world is very crazy, you have to behave, you have to have some belief, not only the price. So I have to find some methodology to understand it. Or I maybe I have uh, the only thing most Chinese people is looking at is the price, you know. So I have to find one methodology to understand the world and to understand the price. And how do you go about it? I mean, is it is it mainly agent-based modeling or, or how do you go about finding out those uh, those mechanics of the markets? Mm. Nowadays, it's mostly based on aging-based modeling, yes. Complexity theory contains many things, uh, which I found mostly in the Bitcoin industry is two things. One is evolution. The other thing is dynamic view. Uh, so in the financial world, in spite of the Bitcoin, so let's talk about the bank system. Mm -hmm. That is very hard for me, a small employee, to understand how the banking system is working. It's very hard for me to understand what is my role, uh, the importance of my role, how my role works. But in the Bitcoin industry, it's still, even, even now, it's, it's, it's still a small industry compared with the, the financial system, the big financial system existing. So I can understand Bitcoin because it's simple. It's not very simple, but it's relatively simple and, and small. So I can see the, you know, uh, the other thing is that Bitcoin is growing very, very fast. So I can see when it's dynamic growing. The second thing is that it is evolving year by year. You know, hard forks, developing, get up things, that's. Um, if I looking back into the bank system, still, I see it growing very, very slowly. Even it stops its growth. But when we are talking about crypto, we are, we are very, very eager to find out the new things, the next things, not only Bitcoin, not only even Ethereum. All the crypto industry attendees are eager to find out new things. Mm -hmm. What are current research questions that you investigate? Um, I'm trying to find out solution or how to say a new model to price one project. 
you know, in nowadays in the secondary market, we we have some model, financial model to do the pricing, mm -hmm. but uh, most of them are based on cash, are based on, on profit. Without cash and profit, it's very, very hard to do the pricing model, no? But, but in the crypto world, cash is very, very hard to find out. Even if there is not a lot of cash or profit like Bitcoin or like Ethereum, but it do not care about the price. It do not care about affect the value of Bitcoin or Ethereum. People are talking about that Bitcoin is a bubble. It only contains price, not contains profit. But the truth is that after 10 years, people do not care about the profit or cash, cash flow about Bitcoin. It grows very, very healthy. And the industry, the total world, recognize it. One thing could live without cash flow, could live without profit. What I want to find out is that to do the evaluation model, the pricing model of the new world technology, you know, in the technology, technology solution or technology companies, the entrepreneurs to start up, to start up a te uh, technology company. It is very hard to do the evaluation. What I want to do is to evaluate them, even if it do not provide cash flow or the profit. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? I mean, what kind of variables do you look at in these models? Maybe there are some ways. You know, nowadays there are more and more people using some like Metcalf laws or some uh, facial, facial modeling to do the evaluation of Bitcoin. Metcalf's law, I think that is the more nodes are connected in a network, the more valuable the network gets. Yes, yes. We live in the network ages. The evaluation or the value of one thing may change it about according to the network effect mostly. So this is very important. But uh, the pure Metcalf laws maybe have to edit a lot something to fit more. Not even Metcalf, but also some other things. Because Metcalf is not a new model. It has appeared for many years. During these years, the research have um, have grown a lot, in especially in the complexity theory. So, um, what we are doing now is to do a model, just according, just focusing on Bitcoin. We are trying to find out why Bitcoin could exist and why Bitcoin could um, be extended. You, but you're also, with X order, you're also investing. Okay, this is the second thing I want to explain. So um, in my point of view, in the future, in the investment industry, there will be full of researchers or scientists with the, how do you say, uh, algorithm scientist with the AI scientist, with the domain experts in the investment industry. They work together to do the investment. This is the future in my mind. Because now we can see um, there are a lot of quantitative trading things appeared in the Wall Street, in the secondary market especially. But the primary primary market uh, investment, the scientists or the algorithm do not affect a lot. But things has been it is changing. Now we have more data, 
about the primary, the early stage company. Mm -hmm. The data is uh, going more and more. Now we have the tools like the knowledge graph, like many other algorithm to do, to, to draw, uh, to make the database already to be used to do the algorithm things. And uh, uh, so we can expect that in the primary market, in the VC industry, the researchers, or how do you say, the algorithm mm -hmm. could be more popular in the future. But still, it's not the end. I think there should be some uh, cooler things to be more cool. Uh, how do you say, you know, what I expect is that the computer to do the investment itself is what I want to do in the long term. So firstly, computer have to be intelligent enough, or how to say, they have to be, have to own the real intelligence, not only the, the machine learning. Machine learning um, only can achieve the core relationship result. It's very hard for machine learning, for AI now, to do the cause and effect. So um, now we can see this year in 2018, <clears throat> there are more and more scientists and uh, researchers are focusing on turning their way into causal relationship. So in the future, maybe when, one day the computer could have its real intelligence. So, um, but um, maybe it would take a lot of years to achieve it. Maybe after five years or 10 years, I don't know. Nowadays, the cost for investors to find out the real value is very, very high. The reason is that the cost is based on human beings and the human beings cost is very high. But are you already investing currently with Xorder? Uh, yes, yes, of course. In Xorder, we have a fund which is called a topology fund. Mm -hmm. Topology fund, you can see it's very uh, a network effect fund to focus on the network things. Mm -hmm. For for example, what are examples of of projects that you found interesting in the fund? Mm, Topology fund is a token based fund. It only invests in the token things. So, which I believe in is that in the next five years, token would be the most popular uh, investment tools or investment standard in the world. Let's take a quick break for a message from our sponsors. This episode has support from my very own The Blockchain and Us newsletter. Get an email from me every two weeks with a very short summary of new podcast episodes so you can immediately pick those interviews you'd like to listen to. To stay up to date, just visit www.theblockchainandus.com and sign up today. What is the focus of these projects? I mean... Do they, for example, you know, do they work on AI? Do they work, uh, do they create new and more effective blockchains? Or what are they working on? Um, the only target to focus is to focus on which would grow mostly, to focus on which project, those project could grow very, very large, very, very fast, and uh, to provide more money back. Mm -hmm. So I, I do not care. Uh, the, the detailed mechanism, which I cared is that it can be growing very fast to do the right things. Which projects are those at the moment, do you think? Uh, nowadays, we are have a demo, a small uh, trying in the investment in the topology fund. Uh, now our portfolio is like below. Uh, like, how to say, over 30% of our portfolio is 2 USD. Mm -hmm. 
the single coin called USD, and uh, 20% of the portfolio is Bitcoin. The reason we have 20% Bitcoin is that we have to wait until the Bitcoin is growing, growing up sharply or going down sharply and to do the margin trading. Mm -hmm. Then uh, also there, are, there is a little portfolio which uh, is in 0x and which is in my token. And uh, the other thing is Pasco. One coin is called Pasco. So what I, what I often see when I speak with people, they say there will be new blockchain projects or new blockchains emerging. But at the beginning, we have to invest a lot, meaning we have to make sure we have to basically bear a loss at the beginning until people adopt, right? Until they, until we see a mass adoption and until those incentives kick in that will sustain the price and the blockchain. What is your opinion there? Mm. Actually, it's it's not a, in my mind. It's not about the beginning or the end things. What I care is uh, the demanding. You know how it can fulfill the demand of the world. Let's talking about Bitcoin now. You know we. Uh, when we are talking about Bitcoin, we could not talk about the profit or its cash flow because it do not provide the profit or cash flow. But we also recognize that Bitcoin have its value. It's valuable. Why? I think the reason is that Bitcoin could fulfill some demands some demands which could not discover very easily. It's deeper, it's deep. So we have to discover it, which demands Bitcoin uh, is already fulfilling. The result is that we can use Bitcoin to do the cross-broad investment and we can use Bitcoin to do the cross-broad trading and we can use Bitcoin to do some buying or selling in the dark market or something like this. This fulfill the demands of small group of people, not all the people, but small of small group of people. Without Bitcoin, these small group of people could not use other things to fulfill their demands. So in this small group of people, uh, Bitcoin is very, very important and uh, they cannot find out one thing that can, can replace Bitcoin. So I can see monopoly. Yes, Bitcoin in this industry is mo monopoly. So I, we can see Bitcoin have its value and for the other things, the other projects, this is the same methodology or same mechanism for me to find them. We, if I, if I check if one uh, project is valuable for me to do the investment, I will check the industry or the demands behind of it firstly to see if there is even a small group of people need it to fulfill their demands. Like, um, when I, when I have, uh, like I have said, I invested in 0x. This is because I think the decentralized exchange is the things that could fulfill the demands of a group of people, which are Afraid of the regulation, which uh, who who these people are very like to uh, to to be freedom. And uh, the other thing is that when we looking about the future, uh, about the token numbers, yeah, it is very very possible that in the future there contains a lot of token, more more than 
thousands of tokens, maybe millions of tokens in the future. But to contain millions of tokens in the future, there should be a lot of markets, not only Nasdaq, not only Chinese market, but also very, very small market containing decentralized exchange markets. So I think it is, it can fulfill the demands. All right. Interesting. And um, when you, for example, let's take 0x as an example. I mean, that story makes a lot of sense to me, right? With the decentralized exchanges, it's definitely has a very good value proposition in the medium and long term. But what else do you look at as an investor? I mean, for example, the team, the track record, what else? Okay. Mm. You know, when we are do some DD, due diligence, about a project, there are a lot of things to do. Uh, the most important thing is team. They are team members. They are, especially they are core team members. And uh, when we are talking about team members, um, there's uh, some key things is that um, they are, how to say, their community, their position in the industry. Uh, let me explain it. When we are talking about the Xerox team, especially the uh, Xerox behavior in the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, we, we could find out that Vitalik would think that Xerox is a good project. And uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem, there are other core team members would think that Xerox is also a good project. So Xerox, the position of Xerox, they are team members in the Ethereum ecosystem. They are in the center of it. Not, not the very center, but very near the center of the total Ethereum ecosystem. So when we are talking about the network, we can see that the center of uh, Ethereum ecosystem is Vitalik and uh, the ETH core team. And uh, there are also some team with them around the center, Ethereum ecosystem center, center nodes. Yes, X is very near the center nodes. And they are, we, we can see it in my mind that ZeroX itself is a central node of the decentralized exchange in the Ethereum ecosystem. I would see if they are the central, central nodes, if they are very good friends. And then we would check about its community. Uh, the community is very, very important because the community would not um, cheat us. When we are uh, talking about some news, talking about some press release, uh, it's always contains some fake things, but the community would provide some real things. Also, we will check about the GitHub, the coding. Coding would not cheat us. So, uh, you can see we, we would find out some solid improvement to before we do the investment. After we have found out that the, the project is very solid and their team is very good in the central nodes, around the central nodes of the Ethereum ecosystem, <coughs> then we will find, we will wait until the price is good. I mean, when the price is going down <laughs> and then, yes. And then we were buying. Mm -hmm. Cool. I just wanted to ask that. I wanted to ask, um, if you're comfortable being the first investor or if you prefer to wait. Um, actually I am not very good at waiting. So when I, <laughs> the, the, this is a problem, you know, when, when I see that this is a good project, then I just buy it uh, immediately. But uh, my team member also talked to me that you need to wait, wait, 
weight. So it's very hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But for the price to go down, the tokens have to be listed, right? Or do you look at OTC trades? Mm, yes, OTC is a very good way to buy some, uh, how to say, some tokens have some poor liquidity in the exchange. Uh, then we could do the OTC trading. But if some some tokens have its good liquidity behaviors, we would do the trading in the exchange. You know, in last year or two year, um, in the past time, we could do ICO by ourselves without KYC, without mm -hmm. private sale. Yes, but nowadays, You can see ICO is very, very hard to find. There is only a little, only, only three or four ICOs, one month or two months. So most of the projects only do private sales and then go to the secondary market. So as for the topology fund, yes, of course, we could do some private sale things, but it, it's, another, it's another story for us to build a, you know, the private sale team to do it. It needs a team. Uh, it's not, we are not good at it. Which we are good at is to do the secondary market things. So mostly you invest in the secondary market in tokens of projects. I have told you, Like Bitcoin, like QSD, like the other things. We bought some all in the secondary market. Okay, cool. What's your view on China as a location for blockchain projects? Mm, China, let me think. In the near future, China is still not a very good country for the tokens to appear uh, because of the regulation things. You know, but in the long term, in the future, may like five years later or 10 years later, I just think China will be the most important country for the tokens because um, Chinese, Chinese people is a very innovative <laughs> innovation. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, very good at innovation, very good at to be an entrepreneur. So uh, one day the token would be very popular in China. I believe in it. Mm -hmm. But you are based in China currently with your projects. Yes. And is, are there any, I mean, do you see any drawbacks to that for your own work? Mm, you know, Shanghai is very, very good for the international communication. I contact uh, many, many foreigners. Uh, they all loved Shanghai. Yes, this is an advantage for us to live in Shanghai to do the work. But in another, the another story is that in Shanghai, it's very hard to do the entrepreneurial things because, uh, Hu Kou Zhengce, the policy of, um, the resident in Shanghai, resident policy in Shanghai, is very very hard meaning people can't move where they want to want to move right yes mm. yes yes so it's very hard for us to do the hiring interesting um yeah i mean when i when i look at some of the chinese wechat groups for example there's there's many conversations about the evolution of a token economy but in china you know itself but then i always wonder how, how exactly how far is china on that trajectory. And you just said it yourself, it's several years in the future, maybe. But wh when do you think that token economy will kick in in China? I have only my guess. Um, let me see. Like five years, I think. What do you think will, I mean, you said it yourself, right? There's regulation and you know many people aren't necessarily on board. With, with cryptocurrencies and tokens, what do you think uh, will be the pushback then from these, you know, um, 
from these entities who don't necessarily like what's happening in a crypto economy because they lose control. What kind of pushbacks do you foresee in, in about five years? Mm, so this is it. Nowadays, the, when we are talking about ICO or tokens in China, uh, it's like 2014 when we are talking about Bitcoin in 2014. The other people would see that, okay, it's forbidden. Do not talk to me about Bitcoin. So it's very similar. When we are talking about tokens and ICOs, people will say that, okay, it's forbidden. Do not talk it to me. So I just thought in the next round, after four years or five years, when the world accept the token, when the token to be the next standard of financial, of uh, you know, the market standard. So Chinese, China would have to, or how to say, accept tokens again. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Tony, in your work, in your own work, what are you still learning at the moment? Uh, English, firstly. <laughs> okay. Yes. And, and beyond that? Um, yes, I am learning how to, how to be, um, a team leader or me a community leader. I don't know because it's my first time to do the entrepreneur things. Um, you know, I, 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 I have a little success in the investment in crypto in the last four years, but it means nothing uh, now or it means nothing in the future. The only thing I have is a little money, but it's useless if you do not have some solid internally. So um, I have to, to make our team to do their best or how to say, uh, not do their best to let's, uh, um, how do you say? Yes, empower themselves. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, um, I myself is always thinking about if I am right or wrong in the decision. You know, my 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 team always have their um would 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 ask me for if they can do this or if they can do that. And I answered yes or not. You can do this or you can do that. This is not the right way, I think. But uh, in the early stage, maybe it's the right way. But later, I, I want this thing to be changed. Uh, fortunately, we have changed a lot, but not mm -hmm. a lot enough. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tony, when we spoke first, um, toward the beginning of this conversation about Bitcoin, you mentioned freedom. Um, what is freedom for you? Mm, very good question. Um, I, I just thought freedom is uh, changing, changing things for me. You know, three years ago, I thought freedom is that I own like... Uh, 5,000 USD dollars and uh, I could be freedom for total year mm -hmm. to do nothing. But nowadays I just see freedom is that in the future I can do nothing and uh, let the machine earn money for me to do the investment for me. This is what I thought freedom now for me. But maybe in the future freedom would change again. But in China, freedom have another meaning, you know. Uh, in China, when you're talking, talking about freedom, firstly, you have to own one VPN to go across the Great Firewall. This is the freedom in China, generally. And then, when we are talking about freedom, it's like you can 
you can communicate with the world. You can、um, go in into the future with the world. This is freedom for one normal Chinese person. You know, nowadays it is very hard for us to see the real world.、Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Did I forget to ask yes, anything? Yes, there is, there is something、uh, which I thought is very important. Is that、um, research? I think, especially research. You know, after Bitcoin appeared, people would to to、um, to see research again,、mm-hmm. to redefine research again. You know, before Bitcoin, research is very hard to. To be commercialized, but after Bitcoin, every token, not every token, but almost every token, have to have white paper. Which is white paper? <laughs> I thought it is research. So we can see the token world, the total token industry is an industry with research to commercialize, to be commercialized. So. Uh, research in the future, I will see this industry have the very very high potential to be tokenized. I would focus on research.、Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, interesting point. That's good to know because I'm often doing research, and also now I'm writing a white paper for a project. So yeah, congratulations. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I really enjoyed this conversation and、um, really appreciate your insights and your stories about your experiences and about what you're、um, observing in China in the blockchain space in general. So thanks a lot for taking time today. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today. More info on our guests and our sponsors is in the show notes of this episode and on the podcast website theblockchainandus.com. To help people find this podcast, it's important that you download, subscribe, and give it a top rating and review on iTunes or on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Manuel Staggers, and I thank you very much for listening.